afternoon. Well, I've arrived at camp and I was initially thinking of doing a solo, but if I turn around, ooh, there he is. Hello. Mr. Mark is on site. Um, he was camping this weekend in this wood. You know, it just makes sense. Team up. There's always someone else to have a chat to then, isn't there? Don't get bored. And I don't get bored, no, true. So uh, so my solo is now a, a joint effort. Um, I've brought a couple of bits of older kit with me today, which haven't been on the channel for quite a while. I'll show you them in a minute. Okay, the first bit of old kit. I've dug the old smock out. Um, been a long time since I've used it, certainly for a camp. Uh, but a friend of mine, uh, Rachel, hello Rachel, posted up a picture of her smock on Facebook and it sort of uh, prompted me into into digging him out uh, and uh, giving him a weekend out so uh, thank you Rachel <laughs> for reminding me I hadn't really forgotten him but uh, yeah it encouraged me to get it out for this camp the smock that is right here's the other bit of old equipment that hasn't seen light of day for many years this bag is normally one for storage at home or if I'm doing like a weekend trip I'm going away in the car and I just want something to, you know as opposed to taking a small suitcase I lob the stuff in here it's a weird design it's got a, a big central compartment but then it's surrounded by pockets it's got six this size three on each side uh, and two big ones on the end using the uh, you know the famous cans of beer measurement all these are two cans of beer sitting upright and the N ones you can get four cans of beer across to give some idea of scale it's got the carry handles which are great for you know lifting it in and out the car boot if you've got a lot of rubbish in it it's got the rucksack type straps it does normally have a waist belt but I've, I've stolen it to use elsewhere at the moment so I haven't used the waist belt and it's got a couple of compression straps here which is I've always found this very, very strange because you can see by the straps, this is where your back is. And I thought straight away, well, that's going to be an issue. You don't actually feel them when you're on, but I still find it a very strange, a strange thing to do. Why couldn't the straps go round and underneath? Who knows? But I'll just pop that. It's got a nice big opening, so it's very easy to load up. It's an easy bag to use, let's put it that way. Um, it's got plenty of disadvantages, but it's cheap and it's great for storing gear. And I say like weekends away in the car, but I just thought I'd bring it out for a change. That bit of padding in that lid, that's the only back padding you've got. So if there's a fair bit of weight in there or lumpy stuff, that's why my padded jacket is in there. Just a little bit of extra padding. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you that because I, th I think it has featured on my channel, but not for probably three years. So it was time that one had an outing. Well, I was going to do a setup portion of the video, uh, but just started unzipping the bag and it started raining. So it was a, a bit of a rush to do things quick. And of course, now it's all up, the rain stopped quite typically. So uh, let me just grab the camera and I'll just show you what I've got in there. Okay, on the outside, the Decathlon Solinac tarp. Um, purely because it's my current favourite. Let's see what's underneath. Right, I've gone with the Solinac or Decathlon hammock. Purely because now it's a bit chillier. Um, I find a slightly smaller hammock makes me warmer i don't know whether it's psychological or it really does but anyway that's that's me um with the dd under blanket on the outside dd under blanket and this fit brilliantly together inside i've got the down hybrid sleeping bag that should be plenty warm enough for this time of year um, i think it's comfort down to six degrees then of course add on the effects of the under blanket i'm, I'm going to be absolutely fine got my inflatable pillow but you cannot see it because these sleeping bags have a pocket built into the hood stick your 
uh, pillow in so it doesn't scoot off in the night. You don't lose it, which is a great feature. I really love that. So that's in there. Hopefully a comfortable and warm night. We've just rigged up a basher over the top of uh, Mark's new tent. It's not one he's bought with his own money. It was actually sent to him to review by a company, a well-known company, which we will not mention because we've had a look at it and we don't really rate the build quality. The design, oh, design's okay, but the build quality is just rubbish. Um, we're that confident, although the weather isn't terrible, it was prudent to put a basher over it. That's how much we're not confident of how well it's finished. Yes, they will remain anonymous. Right, I've moved just outside of camp because I spin you around. <clears throat> that dense section of trees there, it's only a short distance away. What are we looking at? About 20, 30 metres. We can hear voices the other side of that. So we're uh, keeping things a bit quiet until they pass. You know, it could be the landowner, no idea. Time for coffee and cake. Homemade parking. Well, it is close to bonfire night, so uh, thank you for making that, Katie. Very good of you. Yes, yes, Mark, there's cake. Yes, you can have a piece. Cake. <laughs> cake. Mmm. Here we go, mate. Ooh. Right, I'll film this now, while we've still got daylight, that's the only trouble with camping this time of year. The beer for tonight, put my glasses on, because the writing's not ideal. Vocation, Brew York, Sweet Temptation, Chocolate and Caramel Stout. Sounds a bit of a strange combination, stout, chocolate and caramel. Um, I actually tried one last night just to see what it was like. It's actually very, very nice. So yeah, I'll look forward to that later on. We've prepped some wood. That should be enough for this evening. It's not going to be particularly cold. We don't really need it for heat. But uh, well, it's just nice to have a fire, isn't it? Um, I've scraped out the debris at the bottom of the fire pit. So that's ready to go. And we'll light that up in a little bit, when it starts to get a bit darker, probably. It's bloody raining again. So I've retreated underneath the tarp, sitting in the hammock. Oh well, it makes as good a chair as it does bed, so it won't matter. Well, it was a bit dark and miserable, so we lit the fire early. That's more like it. Nothing like just just watching the flames, a little bit of warmth, very nice. Okay, it's dark and the fire is going nicely. So, it's beer o'clock, time for the, the stout with chocolate and caramel. Clunk. That is good. Well, I think it's good anyway. It's a strange combination that sounds like it shouldn't work, but it does. Cheers, folks. Mark's got his ration pack dinners heating up in the pot there on the right. I've got a naan bed bread sitting on the uh, pole there, warming through. I'm ready because I've got homemade chilli there just cooking up in my pot on the little stove. Should be tasty. Right, that's warm through nicely. And so is my naan bread. Oh, can't see in there. Hang on, have a bit of light on. Mm. I hope that doesn't affect the camera too much. Mm. Perfect. Putting the naan bread over the fire. Just crisping them slightly, makes all the difference. 
Well, the weather is playing cruel tricks on us. Every time we sit by the fire and get comfortable, it starts raining. We wait it out for a couple of seconds, you know, to see what's happening, and it gets harder and harder, so we grab the chairs, come underneath my tarp, sit down, rain stops. I think this is the third time now yep. we've done this, and we was under the tarp for about 30 seconds, and the rain has stopped again. It's getting boring now. Yeah, it? yeah, I'm getting quite tired of running to and fro. <laughs> So, do we sit here for a bit, or do we go back to the fire and the rain start again? That rain what a, started again. What a mad night. I think we'll stay here for a little bit, yeah. wait it out. Well, I'm pleased to announce the rain has passed. Um, finally. Finally. I tried to, uh, to, to take a picture of it, but it didn't work. But we have clear sky, stars, so... Uh, it's nice that the rain's gone, but of course that now means it's going to drop cold. But hey, I'll take the cold over the wet any time. So it's going to be a nice night. I like it when it's a little bit chilly. I always seem to sleep quite well, as long as I'm warm in the sleeping bag. And snuggly. Snuggly, yeah, yeah. Snuggly. But um, we were just saying that it's... It seemed like such a long night this time of year. I mean, what, what time are we? It's only quarter past eight, <laughs> and it feels like it's 11 o'clock at night. Um, I, I even feel a bit tired, and, and I think it's it's just my head. <laughs> it's simple as that, you know. It's been dark for so long, it must be bedtime. But, um, yeah, long. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh. What the oh. hell was that? That was my sneeze. <laughs> that wasn't a sneeze. <laughs> that, that, no, no, that wasn't a sneeze. That wasn't a man sneeze. <laughs> oh dear, never mind. Right, oh. I'll probably catch you at bedtime. <laughs> Right, time for bed, and it's an early one. It's only about ten past nine, um, but we were both like really tired, and it's been a long evening. It's been a good evening, but you know it was dark so early. Um, so yeah, might as well just call it quits. There's no point in staying up for the sake of it. If you're tired, you're tired. So I'm in the hammock, and it's starting to warm up already. Under blankets doing its thing. I've got my down bag, so that should warm up quite quickly. The body be no problem, but uh, this time of year, being a bit cooler, I've stuck the bandana on just for a bit of a bit of head insulation. It's you know it's nice and thin and light, so you're not even sort of aware that you're wearing it, but it does make a surprising difference. So, I will turn my light off and see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, and I only just woke up. Oh, it's going to be backwards on that camera, isn't it? Bloody hell. It's quarter to eight so I've just slept um, <coughs> what ten eleven hours well I've not waked up yet it was about nine-ish when I went to bed <coughs> and I slept till quarter to eight I must have been warm and comfy <laughs> this is what I've been waiting for Oh. Well, I don't know what happens with last night's sleep. 11 hours. 
I don't sleep that much at home. I don't know whether I was just really comfortable, really warm, really tired, or whether it was the beer. Or maybe a combination of all of them, I don't know. I but it was all of them. <laughs> probably a combination of all of them. Yeah. But yeah, what a sleep. Um, I don't think I've ever slept that long when I've been out camping before. If I have a good night, it's, you know, sort of seven hours, something like that. Eleven hours. Madness. Right, that's me all packed. Everything's back in the, the weird old bag. <laughs> it's far from ideal, um, but it does hold quite a lot. The pockets around the outside are handy for separating out the little bits. Only if you remember what bits you put in what pocket, otherwise you spend half an hour searching for stuff. But yeah, all packed up, ready to move out. Mark's just packing the last of his bits over there now. And I'll see you on the next video. Um, more camping next week. Um, I believe... I'm just trying to think, 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 think. Oh, I think my mate Robin's coming down for a visit. So I've got to camp him next week. And then the week after that, I'm pretty sure my fellow admins from the South East Woodsman's page on Facebook are coming down. We're having an admin camp. So it'll be myself, Roy and Keith. Again, should be quite a laugh because we don't get to camp together too often. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. Okay, thanks for watching guys.